Hey everybody, it's Minius, and BioWare opened up the gates yesterday, unleashing the first of its combat series, and the video they showed us was absolutely packed. And I'm gonna go over pretty much everything, which includes abilities, weapons, game mechanics, and more. But I should start with the most interesting observation I had from this video reveal, and that's that this game appears to be exactly what the developers have been teasing. A combination of the original Mass Effect and Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. And if you're familiar with either of those, I don't know how that news doesn't excite you tremendously. Perhaps even cooler than that is the look at some of these combat combinations we got to see, starting with this clip where your rider uses pole to grab a guy and an explosive barrel and then throw to chuck that poor dude at his friends along with that barrel to blow them all up. That looks like all kinds of fun. Then there's this clip where Ryder jump packs up and to the right, hovers in midair while blasting this dude with a cold jet, then before hitting the ground uses biotic charge to literally break the enemies into pieces with a cryo explosion. Those are just two examples. I am dying to see more. You showed me what it meant to be truly extreme. I learned that lesson well. Also, you get a better idea of just how diverse the jump pack is. You can jump up and slam down on enemies, which I'll get into later. You can jump, hover, and fire. You can jump in the air and then dash to the side without landing. Combine all of this movement with all the potential abilities you have, and you get a ridiculously diverse combat system. At least, that's certainly the way it appears. So let's take a look at the abilities and passives you can spec into, at least the ones we saw in this video. There are a lot of them. I spot at least 24 different active abilities along with 12 passives divided into the three classic categories combat tech and biotics and let's go over them all starting with the combat powers first of all there's the omni grenade which is this big honking thing we've seen in previous trailers although now we finally get a much better idea of how it works obviously you throw it but check this out your character appears to detonate this one manually Mac Walters, who is Mass Effect's creative director and narrates this video, also says there is a variant of the Omni Grenade that sticks to the target, which we see here. But notice how this second shot of the Omni Grenade doesn't appear to be remote detonated, implying that both the detonation ability and the sticky ability are things that you need to spec into. These Omni Grenades appear quite powerful, if only evidenced by the fact that the maximum amount of Omni Grenades we've seen your character carry is two. Then there's Concussive Shot, which has been in the game since Mass Effect 2. We don't get a look at it in this video or get a look at its description, but we've seen it in action before, and it appears to work just like the previous versions. This portable cover ability that I previously named Tech Wall is officially called Barricade. According to the description, it deploys a temporary energy barricade that will boost shield regeneration for everyone who takes cover behind it, with upgraded versions giving additional combat bonuses. And this is one of the new, more useful abilities we've seen, especially given the open nature of this field of play. Now, it's unclear whether or not this barricade has a time limit, or a damage limit, or both. We do get a shot of the top bar going down into indicating most likely that this barrier's time is up. Now it's going down quickly in this shot, and in the other shots, it doesn't appear to move at all, meaning this animation is likely just a warning instead of an indication on how long the barrier lasts. This ability also requires the use of a power cell, which a few of these appear to, including the Omni Grenade, and I'll point out more as we get to them. These power cells can apparently be replenished at a supply cache. There might actually be multiple supply caches on the field at once, but we'll have to see. The fourth ability we see listed is called Turbo Charge, which appears to take the spot of Marksman and Adrenaline Rush. Now we haven't seen it in action yet, but the description says that it temporarily vents weapon heat via your armor to improve thermal clip efficiency and boost weapon firing rates. Bonuses include damage, rate of fire, clip size, and recharge speed. Then there's the Trip Mine. We only get a brief look at it, but it appears to be a combination of the Proximity Mine and Kane Trip Mine from Mass Effect 3. The description reads, Trip Mine deploys an explosive mine that triggers once an enemy comes within the proximity or crosses a laser sensor. Enemies suffer more damage the closer they are to the mine. This ability also requires a power cell. 
The flat cannon fires Krogan-designed shells that burst into shrapnel upon impact, though this is less effective against armored targets. That second gameplay trailer showed off the flat cannon quite a bit, but this new video shows that it's actually got quite a bit of range to it. The rest of the combat category is made up of passives, and I'm probably unreasonably excited about the fact that you can spec into certain gun types for the first time since the original Mass Effect. There are four gun types, which I'll dive into more later in the video. Pistols, which include SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, and sniper rifles. At the very least, specking into these weapon passives can increase your weapon damage, accuracy, your accuracy while moving, your reload speed, your headshot or weak point damage, as well as reducing the weapon's overall weight. The last two passives are combat fitness and combat tools. We don't get a look at exactly what they mean by combat tools, but I'm assuming that refers to boosting the power cell based abilities like Omni Grenade, Barricade, Trip Mine, and Flat Cannon. The combat fitness passive section appears to do a number of things, like increasing your health and your shields. Apparently it allows you to carry extra guns, up to four. You can buff your consumables or your health regeneration along with a couple other things that I'll have to guess on. Heavy lifting might have to do with reducing the impact that heavier weapons have on your cooldown. Rank 6 versions appear to be cover related and could do anything really. I'm on my own, backed only by my wits and my nerves. No rules, no laws, just whatever it takes to get the job done. On to the tech abilities, which have nine actives and three passives, although one of those actives is blanked out. The first is Overload, which has been in every single Mass Effect game now, although this one appears to work a bit different. I've gone over this before, but let's read the description box. Tapping the button unleashes an electrostatic discharge upon a target, which does high damage to shields and synthetic enemies, as well as detonating primers for combos. Holding the button charges Overload, which causes it to chain to two additional targets. And towards the end of this video, we see exactly how long you can charge this ability for, because it looks like you can hold it down forever. We don't get a look at Incinerate in this trailer, and my own capture of the description is fuzzy due to technical reasons, but I can still read it to you. Incinerate fires a plasma projectile that deals bonus damage to armor and inflicts ongoing burning damage to unshielded foes. Those burning enemies are also primed for a combo explosion. The assault turret is back. We actually get an awesome shot of it, or at least it's animation. Previous videos have shown this thing also comes with a flamethrower, which is probably something you can spec into, but we don't have the details in this trailer. We do get awesome details on the cryo beam, which is a lot like a cold spray version of the flamethrower. Not only do we see it in action, but we get some extra details. The cryo beam directs a continuous stream of super cooled particles that freezes targets, which primes them for combo detonations. Freezing disables unarmored enemies and weakens enemy armor, but has no effect on shielded foes. Let's check out the tree, which we get a brief look at. You can increase the recharge speed, damage, and radius. There is a brittle freeze spec, which may make enemies more vulnerable to damage. A cryo trap, which could do a number of things, including freezing enemies that get too close to already frozen enemies. But here's what really caught my eye. Snap freeze. You might remember this overpowered ability from the multiplayer. We don't get a look at what it does or what this might mean, but if it's similar to the multiplayer, it might turn your cryo beam into a quick burst like we see here. Energy Drain is back, although we've yet to see it in action or get a description for it. When Mac talks about Energy Drain during the trailer, Ryder's actually using a different ability. Tactical Cloak is back, and of course it is. We get a lot of it towards the end of the trailer, and it doesn't appear that Shadow Strike comes with it, but you can see how melee weapons can be used with the Tactical Cloak in a similar way multiple times during this video. Of course, the Tactical Cloak ability still allows you to deal additional weapon damage while you're cloaked, so it would be great for sniper rifles and maybe shotguns, just like in previous games. One cool additional note here is that it appears you can use your jump pack while cloaked. We'll have to see exactly what you can get away with while staying hidden. Flamethrower is one of the abilities we've seen before. I've mentioned that it's kind of like the cryo beam, except the opposite of it. This ability looks damn near identical to the flamer from the Mass Effect 3. The description or tree is not in this trailer, but is in the second gameplay trailer. But I've covered that before, but this is a good spot to repeat the information. Flamethrower unleashes a short jet of flame that causes bonus damage to armor and ongoing burn damage. Unshielded enemies in the jet catch fire, which primes them for combo detonations. 
The tree from the previous trailer shows that you can increase the damage, the recharge speed, the reach, add a damage over time effect while increasing the duration, increase damage to armor, and even though I'm not showing it, reduce burning enemies damage output by 50%. We also finally get a look at what Invasion looks like, though that description is also back in the previous trailer, but it fits, so I'm gonna read it anyway. Invasion infects opponents with an invasive VI-controlled machine swarm that weakens defenses and spreads itself to nearby targets. And I think it looks badass, but we'll have to see exactly how effective it is. The ninth active tech ability is unknown, literally. But I think I might have a good idea of what it is. There is a tech ability from the previous gameplay trailer that isn't in this one called Remnant VI. That deploys a retrofitted Remnant Observer that repairs itself over time, cloaks when critically damaged, and counts as a tech construct. Apparently the reason why this ability is shown as unknown has to do with story reasons, so I guess spoilers? I'd apologize, but this is something they've already shown us. Along with those nine active abilities are three tech passives, team support, which improves defenses and support for your squad, through a kinetic barrier generator and hard suit enhancements. The bonuses we see increase shields, reduce the shield regeneration delay, increases shields regeneration, adds health regeneration to tech constructs, restores power and boosts defense, and increases your squad mates power damage and construct damage. Offensive tech maximizes the offensive capabilities of tech powers through specialized Omni tool software and hardware. We get a look at the tree, which does a whole bunch of stuff, including increased damage to armor, shields, synthetics, and overall damage. You can buff your recharge speed. You can likely buff your combo detonations and more, which I really have to guess on. Perhaps elemental tech boosts fire and cold abilities and technical rounds buffs something. There is one more passive called auxiliary systems, but we don't get a shot of that text at all. Perhaps it boosts the assault turret and other similar abilities, but I'm 100% guessing here with little evidence to back it up. I just say that I'm deep cover and don't appear on systems. I'm doing the best I can, okay? But perhaps what most of you are most excited for are the biotic abilities. Again, there are a lot. Pull and throw, we saw in tandem in that awesome combination early on. There is a second throw clip towards the end of this trailer where two projectiles split from each other and blow away two separate targets. That's kind of cool. There's Biotic Charge, which we've seen a ton of times in multiple clips in multiple trailers. We get our first confirmation that Nova is returning to the single player campaign. Previously, we saw it with the Krogan in the multiplayer, which still totally blows my mind that that's a thing. There is also this ground pound looking thing we've actually seen several times, and that could be an alternative use of Nova. At least a version where you can jump back into the air and then come down for massive area of effect damage. This fits though is yet to be confirmed and there is one other possible explanation which I'll get into in a bit. There's Shockwave returning but we still haven't seen it anywhere and also haven't gotten a look at the accompanying description box. Then there's Annihilation which is returning or kind of tweaked. I'm sure that many of you know that Mass Effect 3 multiplayer had an Annihilation field. It sounds a little bit like Max says Annihilation Shield in the trailer, but this thing at least appears to act like the previous version. The description reads, Annihilation weaves rapidly shifting Mass Effect fields to slowly damage nearby enemies. Enemies caught in the field are primed for combo detonation. However, other powers while Annihilation is activated suffer from reduced recharge speed, which wasn't the case in the multiplayer. You get a great look at its tree as well. You can increase the damage and the radius. You can likely reduce that recharge penalty I just spoke of. You can increase the vulnerability of affected enemies and increase your movement speed. You can also lift unarmored and unshielded enemies into the air. We probably even got a look at that in this trailer. I'll have to guess in the final spec draining field, which sounds a little bit like Reeve from Mass Effect 2 and 3. Perhaps it increases your health or damage resistance. But I'm sure, like me, a ton of you are glad to see this back, even if it might be nerfed a bit. The ability that we saw a bunch of in the first gameplay trailer, which I called a biotic block, is officially called Backlash. According to the description, holding this ability generates a frontal biotic Aegeus barrier that reflects most projectiles and reduces the damage of other enemy attacks. Also, a well-timed initial activation interrupts melee attacks. Previous gameplay shows that this can be a wildly effective ability if you want to run around the map or wait for another ability to recharge. 
Singularity is back, of course, except this time you can end the effect early. You probably already know what it does, but I'll read the description anyway. Singularity deploys a gravity well that lifts and damages unshield and unarmored enemies, as well as priming them for a combo explosion. There's also a new ability called Lance, which might look and work at least a little bit similar to the flare ability Arya had in Mass Effect 3's Omega DLC. We don't actually get a look at it, but the ability does have a description. Lance devastates a small area with a swiftly thrown shaft of energy, which inflicts bonus damage against enemy weak points, such as heads, and detonates combo primers. There are three biotic base passives in addition to these nine actives. Barrier is returning, but as a passive, meaning it might act a bit differently. The description says specialized training reinforces ordinary shields with biotically empowered mass effect fields. Level one, which is not yet activated on this screen, gives a 36% boost to your maximum shields. We get a good look at the offensive biotics tree. You can increase your biotic damage, reduce the time in between abilities, and a whole lot more. It's tough to say which of these does what without a description. Certainly it appears that you can increase the power of biotic combos or explosions among many other things. The final passive, Containment, does something. We don't get a look at it. I have a feeling though, based on all of the stuff we've seen, it is cool. You're really holding out on me? I'm a man on the edge. I got nothing to lose. So that's 24 active abilities along with 12 passives. I'm not yet sure if there are more. There's a chance that this is all of them. You can use any of these in any number of combinations. I really like the return of passives because it allows you to load up on a spec instead of spending points on a bunch of abilities you'll rarely use. Though it appears only three active abilities are available at a time, there is a serious chance you can change your loadout on the fly. There's this favorite section here, which they're going to get into later, that has different loadouts selected. You can see this person going from a pioneering specialist with flat cannon singularity and tactical cloak, switch to a kinetic warper with flat cannon singularity and annihilation instead, and then switch to a Guardian Warrior with Concussive Shot, Incinerate, and Throw. As I said, these profiles will be detailed in a future Bioware video, and hopefully they'll release that soon. Basically, they're taking the spots of classes and appear at the moment far more diverse and far more numerous than previous games. But this Bioware combat video showed much, much more. Let's try looking at the weapons. First of all, all weapons and gear actually come from three separate sources, with very few exceptions, and those sources change how at least the weapons operate. There are Milky Way weapons, which are projectile-based and appear to use thermal clips, just like in Mass Effect 2 and 3. There are remnant weapons, mostly beam-based with a high rate of fire that utilize the overheat system from the original Mass Effect. You can see here, instead of listing the ammo remaining, there is a percentage that goes down while you shoot. Remnant technology appears to be a huge part of this game and covers, apparently, far more than just the plot. Then there are Helios weapons. This game takes place in the Helios cluster of Andromeda, and these items are likely to be made by the aliens who live there. We know of two so far, the Ket and the Angara. And these guns are generally plasma-based and fire slowly, but have heat-seeking technology and will follow their target. Others are charge-based, allowing you to hold the trigger down and unleash a massive blow. They do appear to have a limited amount amount of ammo though, similar to the thermal clip system. We don't yet know how that works, because that ammo system could be separate from thermal clips or the same. We'll have to find out. There are four different gun types, pistols, which include submachine guns, shotguns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles, along with a melee slot. Each weapon has a different rarity, like in the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, broken down into bronze, silver, gold, and platinum N7, the last three of which are considered uncommon, rare, and ultra-rare, respectively. Sometimes I poke through crates too, you know, for extra credits. And you can equip any weapon, no matter what profile or ability loadout you choose, you can carry up to four weapons, though perhaps only if you spec into it, and according to earlier gameplay, you can carry multiple weapons from each type. In fact, you can carry four identical weapons, if you feel like it. 
Now I'm going to go into a full weapon breakdown as soon as I can get my hands on the game. It's extremely difficult to break weapons down from short clips or freeze frames. We do get a list though of some of the weapons that are returning, a few of which will excite you. For pistols, we've got extra confirmation that the M6 Carnifex and M3 Predator are back, but also the M25 Hornet submachine gun and M5 Phalanx are returning. The Charger here looks a whole lot like the M9 Tempest, but perhaps this one is a little bit more stable. Who really knows? There's also a new pistol called the Equalizer, but I'm going to stop real quick and look at the list. There are two Chargers here, Rank 4 and Rank 5. None of the guns listed in this trailer are above Rank 5, which is the maximum rank, and it looks like you can loot and hold onto these guns individually, kind of like the original Mass Effect. We also get a look at the shotguns. We already knew the N7 Piranha and Rieger Carbine were returning, but it also looks like the N7 Crusader, the M23 Katana, the Asari Shotgun Disciple, and Solarian Venom Shotgun are returning. We got a brief hint of that last one in an earlier multiplayer clip. There are also a few new ones listed, like the Dawn, the Hesh, the Ruzad, and the Scattershot. For assault rifles, the M37 Falcon, M8 Avenger, and Revenant are returning, which we already knew about. But in addition to that, we've got the M96 Matic and N7 Valkyrie coming back. There are also some new assault rifles, and I'll just continue to list them because I don't even know what they look like. There's the L89 Halberd, which sounds like an alliance weapon, but we haven't seen it before. The PAW or PAW, the Sandstorm, the Sweeper, and the Token. I have no idea how to pronounce that. For sniper rifles, we have an official confirmation that the Black Widow is back, along with the Incisor and the Indra and the Valiant. Listed here are some new ones named the Inferno, the Ishare, and the Lanat. Again, I'm completely guessing on the pronunciation here. Now, each of these guns have very specific statistics attached to them, which gives you an idea of exactly how powerful each of these guns are. Obviously, there's damage, but also rate of fire, maximum clip size, maximum overall ammo and accuracy. We'll have to try to figure that stuff out and see how it actually works, but perhaps the most interesting stat on here is the last one, weight. The weapon weight mechanic is returning, which in Mass Effect 3 affected your ability cooldown time depending on how heavy the weapons were that you were carrying. And you can kind of see that in action on a few of these lists. From the look at these bars, you can't get anything higher than 100% recharge speed like you could in the previous games. At least this bar is half of the previous one and the power recharge indicated is still at 100%. The lowest we see out of an incredibly brief sample size is minus 8%, but by the look of that bar, it goes way past that. And this system tweak appears to negate the advantage of carrying only one gun, like in Mass Effect 3, but we'll have to see to know for sure. You might also notice that some of these guns have empty slots underneath them. The guns in Mass Effect 3 allowed for two mod spots, and this could be that, or maybe it's something else. As had been mentioned for a while, melee weapons are returning. I can pick out at least three, maybe four different types covering all of the gameplay we've seen so far. There's the generic Omni Blade, which looks very similar to Max Lightning Fast Shiv or Sword. We get many clips of a full blade strike and also get to see this poor dude smashed with a massive hammer. The list we get only has five different melee weapons shown with a few doubles. There's your Omni Blade, the Krogan Hammer, the Angaran Fearer, on or whatever that is, an Asari sword and a biotic amplifier. Hopefully it has actual melee properties to it. We'll have to see more to know for sure. I'm saving the galaxy, Shepard. I don't have time for training. Here's a sort of hybrid returning mechanic from the original Mass Effect, Hazard Zones. The best example of how this works is in the extended clip towards the end of the video. Ryder starts off in the shade, which is still a toasty 39.11 degrees centigrade. For other confused Americans like me, that's over 102 degrees Fahrenheit. When Ryder heads out into the sun, the temperature spikes to an uncomfortable 50.9 degrees Celsius, which is over 123 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's not good for your tech or for you. From just before that, you can see that returning to a safe shaded area recharges your life support while staying out in the sun or whatever hazard you appear to be in drains life support. We can see three different environment types of hazard zones, heat, cold, and radiation. Notice how each of these is only hazard level one. I mean, everything in the trailer is, and that probably means that there are far more strenuous areas, which require you to move from spot to spot in the environment just to stay alive, similar to the Hailstrom mission in Mass Effect 2. 
Before I go, I want to go over some additional observations. A lot of people complained about the lack of cover use in previous gameplay trailers, but you can see in this one that cover is still very much a part of Mass Effect if you want to play that way. Check this out. It's the Eye Patch Squad. Maybe everyone can get a monocle? I, I know I want one. I'm sure also that many of you noticed the compass at the top of the screen in previous videos, but you can really see it in play in this video. Aside from showing objectives, you can locate enemies, you can locate all kinds of things like your nomad, perhaps your ship. This one here is a drop pod that apparently allows you to change your loadouts. There are a bunch of icons, hopefully they're more helpful than distracting. Another thing you probably noticed is the levels during the pause menu. The highest level in this trailer is level 70, but there is no limit. You can continue to level up until every ability is fully charged. There's also a Nexus level. Every shot in this trailer has that at level 1. I'm going to guess that this is your multiplayer level or maybe a combination multiplayer faction level, which should give you access to better gear. At least that's something that's been hinted at before. A quick note on that, multiplayer does not affect the story, just the gear you can acquire. Check out this bizarre armor Ryder is wearing. Is that... And Garan armor? You can tell that the three color health bar is back with blue representing shields, yellow representing armor, and red representing basic health. Each of these will be more susceptible to different types of attacks, just like in the previous games. And look at this. There is an anarchist in this giant mech. It looks like those things are manned, forcing you to kill both the machine and then the occupant. Finally, and I'm not sure how many of you will actually care, but check out the icons for the buttons in the pause menu. They're shadowed in the direction each button is on the controller, and that's something that should be done more often. I'm finding out now that switching controllers is very hard. I'm going to go over all of the enemy types we've seen and all of the combat so far in a future video, but for this one, that's pretty much everything I saw. If you saw something that I didn't, or want me to go into more detail on anything, let me know in the comments section. This gameplay series Bioware is running has future installments coming where they'll go over the profile system, which is replacing the class system, the favorite system, which changes powers, I touched on that briefly, and squad skills and commands, which do exist, but we don't know much about how they work in this new game. So keep an eye on Mini SGC for my breakdown of all of that. And if you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps out the channel. Uh, Mac, is there anything I forgot? I should go now. <laughs>